Now we're going to have uh, Katie, who actually works at Iterable, uh, talk about one of our mutual customers, uh, Shift, who's based out in San Francisco, um, and talk about how they use uh, Segment and Iterable to power some personalized messages. All right. Awesome. Thought I'd start out with a joke. Um, lighten the mood. It is Thursday night. Who's excited for Friday? Yeah. Okay. Um, what's a nosy pepper? Anyone? Okay. I'll just tell you. Um, jalapeno business. Use it. It's my go-to. All right. <laughs> Okay, my name is Katie. Um, I head up customer marketing at Iterable, and I'm here today to talk to you about Shift's customer story. So, who is Shift? Uh, Shift helps you buy and sell cars. Uh, their mission is to turn this from a burdensome experience to actually a really enjoyable one. Uh, they help with everything from being able to shop online uh, to test drives, they actually will come directly to your home, uh, or you can go to a nearby location, and they help you with the paperwork. I know for myself, I've purchased a car before, and that's the actually most frustrating part, because you're so excited to drive out the parking lot, and then you have hours of paperwork ahead of you. Um, who here has actually bought a car? Raise your hand. Cool. I know we're in New York, so it's not a given, um, but uh, you can kind of to that point, the nature of their business, it's a super long life cycle with low frequency. So not everyone buys a car, so you really need to capitalize on when you have your user's attention, and so re-engagement is really big for them. Not only is re-engagement super important for Shift, um, and so their email, message, email messaging and marketing is super crucial, but we're entering a time when personalization is no longer enough. The consumer is expecting more, like hyper-personalized communications to the point of individualization. Uh, so it's super important to stay on top of mind for them. And it's not easy. Um, Shift has had some challenges with this. And some of them include data silos. So they didn't have a central repository where all of their data lived to get that view into the customer. They were also using multiple email systems, which in turn led to multiple teams managing email, which then in turn led, led to a lot of manual processes. So if you can imagine two different teams, they had to have an external email calendar keeping track of all of this information. They also had to have a manual process for how to manage unsubscribes. People are unsubscribing in two different systems. How do you get those to talk to each other? Uh, they also had inconsistent templates. So because they had different email systems, it was providing an inconsistent brand experience to their consumer. And due to the data, they were basically only able to send basic drip campaigns. Now, this all kind of snowballs, is a snowball effect. Um, so because their data wasn't all in one place, they couldn't analyze the results and really start capitalizing on um, the campaigns that were really successful for them and instead uh, had to kind of just guess. So this is what their pre-stack look like. If you can see here, I wish I knew how to use the laser. That's okay. They have um, two uh, email uh, platforms here. Uh, and the lines are just kind of going everywhere. Uh, it's not all centralized. OK, so they knew that they needed to evaluate a stack. So they looked at a bunch of different options, I think Marketo, HubSpot. Salesforce Marketing Cloud, and they landed on the segment and iterable relationship for a couple reasons. One, data flexibility. So they were able to really get real-time data into segment, which then gave them kind of the flexibility to do whatever they wanted with it. And two, they were able to build that mar modern marketing stack to really select the platform that they wanted um, to the best platform for each thing. So they could really stitch together what they wanted rather than that all-in-one solution. Uh, so as you can see here, they're pulling in web traffic data, app data, and then also offline data. So think about a buying a car or selling a car. Most of the journey is online, but there is that last part of it that happens offline. And that is actually the most important part. So now they're able to get that full view into um, when they actually purchase their vehicle so they can close that loop. They use Periscope data for their data storage and analysis. And then they also use Iterable with Segment. And so we're going to dig into that. And I thought the best way to do so is show you guys an example of before and then after. 
Okay, so this is an example of their test drive email before they uh, updated their stack. So if you see here, they're doing that generic field replacement of their first name and then also the vehicle that they used. Notice that it's kind of text heavy, so maybe not the most engaging experience. And then they're using a static footer. So one thing to note here that was actually really problematic about a static footer for Shift was they would have um, people looking to buy a car and test drive it actually end up going to this location. And this location was their headquarters location, not the location to te test drive vehicles. So people turned up, saw a bunch of uh, computers, people working away and wondering where the cars were. So this was actually quite problematic for them. And then as you see here, they do have a CTA button saying browse available cars, um, which is great, but it is a little bit of a dead end to their user. So you want to provide that engaging experience within the email if you can and provide other options. Clearly they're interested and wanna buy a car, so you wanna capitalize on this transactional email. Now the after, okay. So right off the bat, you can see images, which is great. So Segment was huge for them. They were able to then pull in these images um, through Segment going to Iterable through an Iterable data feed. So on the left, or on your left, uh, you can see uh, that's the car that they were meant to test drive. And then on the right is actually images of cars that they had viewed on their website. And they're populated here so that they give them additional options on those cars that they might be interested in to test drive since they can't test drive the other one. Another thing I want to call out is the snippet. So what a snippet is, is you're able to update this information in one place and then it updates across all of your email templates. So this is a great use case for social links. Um, so if, say, for example, they wanted to add their Snapchat or whatever to snippets. Uh, they could just do so really quickly in about a couple minutes and then it's across all their templates. And then metadata store. So as I mentioned before, this is something that the test drive location they're able to fix um, because basically from a repository of information, they can match that up with the user data and then in turn populate the most, the closest location uh, to that user here so they don't end up not being able to test drive a car when they want to. All right, now let's look under the hood. Anyone get it? Okay, cool. Okay, so this is a iterable workflow um, here. Basically what's happening is segment is triggering that workflow. So it says a custom event. In segment, you can um, fill, obviously have all of your fields and toggle on or off what you wanna be pushed to iterable. So right now they're pushing the viewed product um, information over to iterable. From that, it triggers this workflow to start. And then if you see here, they're updating the user's profile uh, with this information of the car. So they're able to populate it in that email that you just saw. Cool. So why do we care? Um, they've seen a lot of uh, great engagement metrics with their, uh, with their emails, which is awesome. But I'd say even more important, they saw an increase in automation and accuracy um, due to not having to be kind of bogged down with all those manual tasks. They also saw an increase in personalized content. I think those uh, recommend recommended cars are super cool. Uh, and then they have more time to experiment and optimize their campaigns, not because they don't have to A, rely on engineering, they're empowered to build these campaigns on their, on their own. So just as a key takeaway from this presentation, I think that personalization is super key into keeping a customer engaged. Consumers are expecting more, so it's super important to keep that top of mind. And the way to do it is really through data and making sure you have good, clean data, and it really makes a difference between a good and great company. Cool. Sounds good.